this is Hope Evangelistic Church. Amen. Hope for the salvation that broadcast. Amen. We thank and praise God today. Brother Paul here. Amen. Last week we had with us uh, Reverend Perry Rafford. Amen. And he preached faith gives, uh, faith is fantastic. Amen. What a mighty word from the man of God. Uh, uh, Lifestep Baptist Ministries. Amen. Next week uh, next week, first Sunday in February, we will have with us Reverend Dr. Ron Qualls, amen, D.D., amen, he will be bringing the word for us, amen, look look for the advertisements on Facebook and YouTube, amen, we will be playing some of his messages and having a flyer out like we did with Reverend Rafford, amen, while you're out there at YouTube, amen, Look at our YouTube channel, amen, and we ask you to, to go ahead and, and like what you like, and you also can subscribe. We need subscribers, so subscribe to the message, to, to, the, to, the, to the channel, uh, and that will help us, okay? All right, let's get, let's, let's get ready to get started, amen. Uh, Emily has already read the text for today, but we're going to reread it. For those of you on social media, amen, and uh, it's coming from 2 Kings, the 5th chapter, actually we, when we finish we're going to go all the way through the 6th chapter, but uh, I say to you, some of you probably, especially if you're coming out of Revival Temple, you've heard me preach this before, uh, many times before. Uh, when I had the Friday night services at Revival Temple, but don't 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 take it for granted. I'm gonna say the same thing because uh, hey, hey, this this is God's word. Amen. Too spiritual to 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 be that exacting. Amen. Let's let's look at the second chapter. I mean the fifth chapter of Second Kings. Amen. We're going to begin at the first verse. Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria, and he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper, and the Syrians had gone out by companies, and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And and she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told the, his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the, from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Therefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when he, Elijah the man of God had, Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord and his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus 
better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said unto thee, Wash and be clean? Then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Amen. Father, we thank you, we praise you for this day, God. We thank you for your word, Lord God. Your word, Lord God, is rich and it's bursting with, with power and energy. We believe, God, in the name of Jesus, that as we look at your word, Lord God, that you would feed us from on high what we need for this day, not tomorrow, not, not yesterday, but for this day and for the week to come. We thank you, God, that you are with us. And we thank you, God, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, what I'd like for you to do, amen, is bear with me for a while. And let me, let me set this up. Amen. We see that Elisha, that Elisha is, 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 did not even come out to, 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 to greet the man. But Elisha in the tenth verse sent a messenger unto him saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and didn't want to do it. Just as he, he went on about the rivers, how the water was dirty in Israel, muddy waters of the Jordan. And, and he went on and he talked about his waters, how clean they were, and he wanted to wash. He ain't going to do it, and he left in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him, and he repented, and he went on, and he went down in the 14th verse. He went on down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to, to the man of God. And he was cleansed of his leprosy. Hmm? I want to use for, for thought, just be obedient. We've been preaching for the last month or so on, on, on from the theme, uh, Necessity is the Mother of Miracles. But I put a title on this one also. Just be obedient. Amen. Now, my, 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 as my custom is, I like to go back and bring you up. Amen. Uh, from, from verse 1 uh, up to, to 14. Now, let's read in the, in, the, in, the, in the book of 2 Kings, the 5th chapter, starting at verse 1. Now, Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man. And his master, with his master, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Set it up. Naaman was the captain of the host. He, he was in charge of the army of Syria. The king of Syria, the king of Syria was, 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 really liked him. He had promoted him and, and, and gave him that position, but he was a leper, and he really wanted him to be cleansed of that leper. He, he, he just wanted him to be cleansed of that leprosy. Remember now, in Israel, leprosy meant you had to stay outside the city. You couldn't go home. You had to stay in a leper, pretty much a leper colony. But here we had the king of Syria really desiring that this good man, this, this captain of the host, the, the, this man of valor, uh, uh, that he wanted him to be clean. But the Bible don't really say that, but, but, but it's, it's, it's given. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and, and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. That's, that theme is, 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 is pretty uh, significant in, 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 in Israel's history. But anyway, in the Syrians, they, they had bands that would come into Israel and, and raid and loot. And they took this little girl captive. Now, she's a, 
Israeli, uh, Israelite, or she, 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 she's a Hebrew, however you want to say it. And this little girl said to her mistress in the third verse, Well, God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And that's a good thing. She's, she's promoting the prophet uh, of the Lord. Amen. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus says the maid is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Hmm, this is something I could do for him because he's done so much for us. Let's see if I can't do something for him. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go to, go. And I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. My, my, my. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest receive, mayest recover him of his leprosy. Hello. Let's, let's stop right there for a minute. And, and, and these... This is what's going on. The king of Syria, he he heard this that there is a prophet in Israel, and he can he can recover him. He didn't know who the prophet was, but kings tend to keep talk to kings. So he sent a letter to the king of Israel, Amen. And 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 he's asking him to recover him. And the language is, is a little little strange, but, but, but think about it this way. The king received it as his letter for him. <laughs> okay? Huh? And the king responds. And it came to pass when the king, in the seventh verse, the king of Israel had read the letter that he tore his clothes, or he rent his clothes, and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie that this man does... They had sent to me to recover a man of leprosy. He sent, see, the king thought he sent him to him. <laughs> the king did, the king didn't hear what, didn't understand what he was saying. Wherefore consider I, the, uh, to, wherefore consider I pray you and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So, so we've already had some skirmishes, uh, bands coming into Israel. Uh, uh, looting and rioting and taking people captive, so so now he's my, maybe he's trying to start a fight. This is the king's thinking, but the word got back to the prophet Elisha, and when the prophet Elisha heard what what, what was going on, he he was ready to respond. And in the earth verse, he said, and it was so when Elisha. The man of God heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. Then he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. Amen. Now, now, I, I, I understand where, where, where Elisha is coming from. Because... I believe that the highest praise that you, that you can give God is when you boast on his ability. <laughs> Amen. You boasted on his ability. Now, 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 I know today people don't believe in healing. People don't believe in miracles no more. Uh, you know, <laughs> I do. I do. I believe God has not changed. God has never changed. And I do believe, listen to this, I do believe that God is performing miracles every day, all day long. We just don't, see, some of y'all just don't see them. I've seen miracles in my ministry. Amen. So what are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm, I'm saying that, that Elisha, in that eighth verse, he, 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 he's, he's, he, he, had, he is trying to get people to see Hey, send that boy, send that bad boy on down here. Send that leper to me. And, and, and you will know that there is a God in Israel. Now, 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 now that's a boast on God. Some people would say that's arrogant. Some people would say that's arrogant. And, and I've been accused of arrogance, being, being arrogant. And, and, and really and truthfully what it is, it's a boast on God. 
When you boasting on God, some people think it's you boasting on yourself. But a boast on God is a boast on God. That's high praise when you can stand and believe that God will do a thing because his words say he will do a thing. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Paul, I feel, I feel a miracle coming on. Here we go. And when Elisha, the man of God, heard of the king of Israel, had rent his clothes, and he said to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. <laughs> Send him to me. Come on here. Be, he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. Amen. Ain't it a good thing? Ain't it a good thing that, that, that you can talk? This is Old Testament when the prophets, when the prophets were being used of God to speak, to speak and do miracles on behalf of God. We're we're in the New Testament now. We're in we 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 have a new covenant, and 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 there and and just me. This is me. I don't believe that there is such a thing as a prophet anymore. Uh, I believe there's a gift of prophecy, but I don't believe that there is an office of prophecy of prophet in, in, in the body of Christ. I, I, you can say what you want. Uh, I, I'll step out there and say it. Amen. The gift of prophecy is, 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 is present, but the office is not. Amen. The, 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 the situation here is that we have, we have, the, 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 the prophet saying, send him to me. Hmm? Send him to me. Now, and when he goes down to Elisha's house, when they lead him to Elisha's house, look at this. Elisha don't even come out. Hmm? He sent Jehazi, who was his servant. He sent Jehazi out and, and gave him the message. Hmm? And Jehazi said said to 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 to, the, to 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 Naaman, go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Hmm. Now, now, listen to this. All he had to do was be obedient to what what God told him to do through the prophet. Hmm. We all he had to do is do what he was told to do. But sometimes our positions put us in to, can, can go to our head. Hello, come on preachers. Sometimes our positions can go to our head and, and we don't want to do what God would tell us to do. We think we know better than God. We don't say that. Oh, no. We would never say that, but our actions say that. We say that. <laughs> what are you saying, Brother Paul? You the 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 the, 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 the Naaman's, Naaman's actions, he even spoke those words. We don't actually speak those words out of our mouth, but we think them. Hello, that we know better than God. Hmm? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me let me tell you something. I'm uh, I, I, I raise my hand, both my hands, because I've been guilty on more than one occasion. God gave me a message to go to this this church one time, some years ago. And when he gave me the scripture, and I looked at the scripture, I said, this won't preach. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? I said, God gave me a scripture to go and preach at this 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 church and i said this won't preach this is not a preaching message this is what you what he gave me and this won't preach there is nothing there there is nothing there i studied it i prayed over it i prayed for the church i prayed for the pastor that's how i get my messages on my knees i pray i, I got a little something for the for the church i got a little something for the pastor but but but, but Huh? 
<laughs> what they were saying was, that won't preach. Which was in line with what I was saying, God just won't preach. I read the scripture again. And as I read it the second time, God opened up that scripture to me to show me what was going on in that church. And when he opened it up to me and showed me what was going on in that church, and I started to reveal what was actually happening in that church, the pastor of the church, not that your some people say she set me down or he set me down. I'm saying the pastor grabbed my arm and pulled me into the back office. And I never finished the message because she realized I was getting ready to expose some things. Woo, Brother Paul, what did you, what did you say? You, you see, sometimes we don't... We don't we think we know better than God. <laughs> we think we know better than God. And I'm just giving you my example. I'm talking to preachers now. Um, a lot of my ministry is to preachers. But I'm talking to preachers. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hmm. Even if it don't make sense. Even if you can't make sense of it, go with it. Huh? See it through. See it through. If God said it, if God gave it to you, see it through. It will work for you. Now, that's just be obedient. That's all I'm saying. Just be obedient. Now, uh, but Naaman, after hearing about dipping into Jordan seven times, Jordan, Naaman was wrong. He was mad. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought that the prophet would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name. You, 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 you. Ain't, ain't that how we are? Ain't that how the church people are? They want you, they want you to do, a, do it a certain way. <laughs> he would surely come on to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord and, 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 and strike his hand over the place where the leprosy was and recover the leprosy. You know, that don't don't y'all y'all better y'all better y'all better y'all come come on here. I can't I, I've been in spirit field ministry all my life. I've been in spirit field ministry over 40 years. And I've seen all kind of stuff. Hmm? I've seen all kind of stuff. All all over the place. I've been praying for people. <laughs> I've been praying for people. And have a long line of people to pray for. I pray for this one. I pray for that one. Pray for this one. And then I pray for this one. And when I pray for that one. She's slain in the spirit. And the first three that were in line. Get back in line. <laughs> because they want to be slain in the spirit. Help, listen to me. Yeah, yeah, this is what he's saying. Do it a certain way. Do it a certain way. And I had the opposite of that to happen to me. My wife was present. She can very bear this out. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm, in, I'm at this church. I won't call the name of the church. And, and the pastor's wife comes up in prayer line. She comes up and, and she has instructions for me. She says, uh, uh, Brother Paul, I want you to pray for me. It's a private matter. I won't tell you what it is, but I want you to pray for me. I said, okay, no problem. She said, now wait a minute. Before you touch me, I want you to pray for me. I don't want to speak in tongues, and I don't want to fall. <laughs> so would you pray for me now? <laughs> and I have no control over that. That's the Spirit's job. He, but, but, but you see how people, and, and I'm saying this because you have to see how people, listen to me, they, this is what they expect from you. They expect a certain thing from the man of God. Hmm? And Naaman was the, one of those people. He, he should
should have he should have he should have waved his hand over the place where the where the leprosy was and recovered me of my leprosy in the eleventh verse. Now 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 Naaman is ranting in in, in the twelfth verse. Naaman says, "Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus?" Better than all the waters of that old muddy Israel, of muddy Jordan in Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? Huh? He gave you specific instructions. He didn't tell you to wash in, 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 in the river far apart. Hmm? He didn't say go to Abana. He didn't say neither one of those rivers. He said the Jordan, the muddy Jordan. Hmm? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Hmm? He, the man don't gave him what to do. How many times y'all 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 think y'all think that y'all think that that that, 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 that Naaman is, is just crazy and this is just a good old lesson on Naaman's part uh, uh, leprosy. No 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 no. Look, he is a good he's a good 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 example of the now day preacher. What? What did you say, Brother Paul? The now they preachers, 2024. The now they preach it. He, you, 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 you know what, what God said, but you want to do it another way. <laughs> you, you know exactly what God said, but, 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 but you have to use your intellect, hello, to, to, to come up with a better way to do it. You, you have to call on a few prophetic friends to ask them, what do you think I should do? Now, God already told you what to do. You ain't got to call on nobody else when you've already got a word from God. Hello? I remember one time, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I remember one time, God gave me a word for, the, for this preacher. And, 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 and when I gave the word, it wasn't received very well. Because the word was easy. God said, when I tell you what to do, you don't ask your wife if it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to ask your wife if it's okay if God tells you what to do. You ain't got to have a meeting with your family or with your board if God has already given you the word. All you got to do is execute. Do what God tells you to do. Just be obedient. Whoa! Somebody ought to... Boy, I wish I had more room up in here so I could walk the aisles. I'll be glad when we go back when we go back in person. Amen. I'll be walking the aisles on this one. Huh? So Naaman went away in a rage. He's mad. I ain't gonna do it. Come on, preachers. Y'all know y'all been like that. Come on, you hear what I said? You go away in a rage. You angry. Huh? I don't want to go over to that church. That church ain't got but ten members. My offering ain't gonna be nothing. Come on, saints. Y'all know what I'm talking about, preachers. You don't want to go over that church. Here I have 500 members, and you're sending me over to a church that ain't got about 15, 10, 15 members. And there, what kind of offering am I going to get? I ain't going over there. I'm going somewhere else. I call my buddy. My buddy, he has 500 members, and see if he need me to come preach for him. Because I ain't going over there. I'll call that preacher back and I'll let him know I can't go. <laughs> I ain't coming over there. It's too violent over there. That's a bad neighborhood. That's southeast. I ain't going to southeast. Come on here. And 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 this is the way the church is today. It's just like Naaman. But listen to this. And his servants, his servants came near and spoke unto him and said. My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean, then he repent, he relented and said, I'll go, I'll do this thing. In other words, let me let 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 let, let, let me bring some other things in here. When when you when you when you are a leader. And you got people around you. You got people around you, whether they're servants or not. Listen, 
Be able to listen because God can speak through anybody. Just because you, you carry a, a great title don't mean nothing. Hello? God can speak through anybody. God can speak through children. And he does oftentimes speak through children. So be open to what? Even as Naaman was, he listened to the people that were around him. You got too many pastors who would never consider anything that the elders that's under them had to say. They, you got pastors who would never consider somebody that have not been licensed or ordained. Hello? Who would not even consider somebody speaking a word to them to, to give them direction when, when, when they don't have what they have. Somebody ought to say amen. Brother Paul, you need to stop this. Why? Because you 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 ruffling feathers. Well, feathers need to be ruffled. Hmm? How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean? You want to be healed? You better do what if you want to be healed, you better do what God said do. If you want God's results, you have to do what God said. Just be obedient. Hmm? Then he went down. He relented. And he went down. And he dipped himself seven times in Jordan, like the man of God told him, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was cleansed. He got his miracle right there. You see, you see, you see necessity is the mother <laughs> of miracles. But you have to be obedient. You have to be obedient to what God tells you to do. See, our theme is necessity is the mother of miracles. But you have to be obedient. Just be obedient. Uh, and he returned to the man of God. <laughs> now, 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 I'm laughing because I'm seeing something here that, that I, I really don't want to bring in unless, unless God give it to me. He returned to the man of God, and he and his, all of his company, and he came and he stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Hmm? Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except here in Israel. The, the God that we serve is the God. Hmm? No, 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 what about Buddha? Buddha, Buddha is not God. Hello? Oh, oh, what about Muhammad? Muhammad uh, is not Allah. Is not God. Hello? What are you saying, Brother Paul? You're going, you're going to get yourself in trouble. No, I'm not. I preach God's word all the time, and I preach it the same way, and I ain't going to take it back. Hmm? The God of Israel is the God of gods. Huh? There is no other God. Hmm? Ah, there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, the man of God said. But you see, the miracle of healing Naaman was to do something to Naaman. And because Naaman's influence, the servants that were with him, were also affected. And when he goes back and showed the king of Syria, this king of Syria would be affected. The miracle is always for more than one person. Hello? Naaman got, got, got healed. But other people, hello, listen to me, other people been, were, 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 were in on it. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this because God gave me this one time, and 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 I had to cons I had to consider it. I had to ponder it for a long time before I understood it. If you witness a miracle, you're you're in a different place with God. Once you witness, wait a minute. You said you're talking about God performing a miracle on me. No, 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 no. I ain't say that. I said once you witness a miracle. Somebody you know, receiving a miracle. If you see it yourself and understand it to be a miracle, you become a different person in God. Hmm? You, it's 
your obligation to publish it. It's your obligation to tell people about it. You, you, you have to go. I was there. I saw it. Hmm? The man didn't have no arm, and his arm grew out. Hello? The man couldn't see, and God opened up his eyes. Hello? Come on here. Whatever the miracle was, you are obligated. Hello? You are obligated to, to, to tell that miracle, to tell that testimony. I was there. I saw it. Hello? Oh. Let's look at 15 again. Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. And we need to publish that too. Because we got too many people trying to mix mix Christianity. Hello, listen to me. Mix Christianity with Islam. We're trying to bring Islam into Christianity with, with without repentance. You have to turn from Allah and serve the God of Israel. Oh, somebody going to be mad. That's okay. Be mad. I don't mind you being mad. Amen. That's your prerogative. But now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing for thy servant. And he said, as the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will not receive a, 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 a gift from you, a blessing from you. Hmm? And Naaman urged him, please take it. Now, most of the preachers today will take it. Hello? Most of the preachers today will take it and not understand what, 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 what Elisha was saying. Hello? <laughs> All the prosperity preachers would, would, have, would not have had to be urged. They would have been demanding it. Hello? See, Elisha realized he didn't do it. <laughs> Elisha realized that he did not do it. God did it. And that was not the time to receive a gift for himself because he wanted the man to know that this was all God. None of him. All God. Elisha didn't even come out to meet him. Elisha didn't even come out to, to greet him and give him the word. He sent Jehazi. Jehazi gave him the word. Hmm? And that's another thing. Huh? That's another thing. Leaders, you need to learn how to delegate authority. You need to learn how to train the people that's under you to do the miracles, to do the giftings that, that they have, to allow their gift to operate. You got to give people space. You have to make room for them to be able to minister. You want them to minister just like you minister and then doing it their way. Huh? Give opportunity. He gave Jehazi opportunity to minister. The word that he gave him. Hmm? Come on here. Come on here. I, I, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Bishop Carter used to send me places and say, look, 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 I can't go, but when you go, tell them this. Tell them God said this. And tell them I said God said this. And I, and I go do what he said do. Hello. I was given opportunity. And I give opportunity to other people. Amen, because I believe that God needs all of us in operation. God needs all of us doing what God would have us to do. We all have, have a place in God. But pastors, you, have, you, can't, you, can't, you can't keep everything for yourself. Hmm? If you got somebody that, that God is using, let him use them. Don't be intimidated by somebody else's gift. God has gifts for everybody. Oh, somebody need, somebody need to shut Paul up. Somebody shut him up. Shut him up. Hmm? Elisha said in the 16th verse, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive no gift. And he urged him to take it, but Elisha did not take it. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant, Two mules of burdens of earth, 
For thy servant shall henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto the other gods, but unto the Lord. Hmm? What is he saying? He's asking Elijah to give him some, some, some dirt from Israel to take back as a token of what God did so that he could remember what God had done for him. What are you saying, Brother Paul? What, what happened in Naaman? What happened in Naaman was, 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 was so great that, that it changed his life. Hmm? You see, you see, God, God knew, God knew if he changed Naaman, he was going to also change Naaman's servants. Hmm? And anybody else that he, he, he had influence over, and which was the whole king, the whole kingdom of, of, of Syria. Hmm? He did some things in, in, in Naaman, but he also did some things in others. Miracles are never, never private. They're always for a greater audience. Hmm? He said, I can't. Listen to me. He said, I can't. Listen to this. He said, I can't disobey my master, the king of Syria. So when my master go in to the god of uh, 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 Ripon, Ribbon. Is it Ramon? Ramon. Ramon. If when he goes into the to worship at the God of Ramon and he bows, I'm gonna bow. But ask God to forgive me that I have to obey the king. He said, but I want him to know that he'll always be my Lord. He'll always be my God. He'll always be my God. What are you trying to say in all of this, Brother Paul? Just be obedient. How many points you got? One, be obedient. <laughs> we want to hold people to homiletical rule. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is, just be obedient. What? Just be obedient. <sighs> Because we're dealing with a theme here. Necessity is the mother of miracles. I'm going to drop down to the sixth verse. I'm not going to even deal with Jehazi's leprosy. I'm going to drop down to the sixth chapter in the first verse. And we're going to end here. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take unto thee every man a beam. And let us make us a place there. The beam is talking about a tree. There we may dwell. And he answered, Go. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he said, he and, ja, and, and Elisha answered, I will go. Hmm? And he said, I will go. So he went with them in the fourth verse. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down trees or wood. But as one was chopping down a tree, the axe head fell unto the water. And he cried, and he said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. In other words, he had borrowed the axe. The axe in those days was uh, iron with a wood handle. The wood handle broke. That's why we don't use wood handles that much anymore in anything. Amen. He said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. In other words, he didn't even own the axe. He borrowed the axe. And, and if, if, if it stands that he borrowed the axe instead of buying the axe, that means he couldn't replace the axe. If you borrow something and you lose it or somebody takes it from you, you're still responsible to give that person that axe back. But if you can't give the axe back, if... You can if you cause if you could have afforded it, you would have bought the axe instead of borrowing the axe. And the man of God said, Where did it fall in at? And he showed him the place where the axe head fell in. And he cut down a stick and cast it in where it fell at. And the axe head did swim. 
the iron did swim, the Bible says. Some, some translations say the, it floated up. Some, some translations say it, it, it swam. But either way, it defied gravity. And if it defied gravity, it's a miracle. <laughs> if it defied gravity, the laws of nature, it's a miracle. Hmm? He cut down a stick. There was no power in the stick. There, there, there was nothing in the stick that made the iron swim. It was an object lesson to those that were around him. Remember, Elisha, just like Elijah, he is now head of the school of the prophets. He have all these prophets around him. And he, this is an object lesson to him, that they do what God will tell them to do. If they're obedient and do what God say, they will get God's results. And God's results could result in a miracle. He cut down a stick. Cast it in thither, and the axe head did swim. The iron did swim. Now we know iron don't swim. Iron sinks to the bottom of wherever water it goes in. But it's a miracle that it was able to come back up, and he was able to reach in and grab it. Hello, hello. I know, I know, I know. But that was back then. God don't do miracles no more. I know some people don't believe in miracles. Some people believe. I, I had a friend to post on 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 my YouTube on my YouTube channel that 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 miracles don't happen every day. If they did, they would be called regulars. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, my brother. Miracles happen every day. Just because you don't see them, it, 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 it don't mean it don't happen. <laughs> just because you don't see them, don't mean it don't happen. Yes, 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 yes. Miracles are happening every day. Just be obedient to what God would have you to do. See, necessity is the mother. <laughs> it's the mother of miracles. You have to have a need. And just like the axe head that was borrowed fell into the water, it floated, it swam, it defied, it defied gravity, and it floated to the top. It swam to the top. However you want to say it, it's a miracle. Hmm? It's a miracle then. The same God yesterday is the same God today. There is no difference. Miracles are happening all around us. There are churches that are experiencing miracles right now. Just because your your, your dried up church ain't, say, ain't receiving no miracles, that don't mean miracles ain't happening. Hmm? You need to preach on it if you want to see miracles. Preach on it. That's why I'm preaching on it. Because we need miracles around up in, up in here, they say. <laughs> up in here. Up in this church. We need miracles. Amen. Amen. And I believe God is supplying the miracles that we stand in need of. You, you, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find anybody to talk miracles with. It's getting harder and harder to find preachers that, 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 that believe in the Bible, that believe that God has not changed, that God is the same today as he was yesterday. He's the same God. We might be living under a new covenant, but God is the same God. He has the same power. He can still part the Red Sea. He'll part your Red Sea, whatever it, whatever it is. He is still in the miracle working business. Just be obedient. Just be obedient. Now, the, one of the greatest miracles is to transform life. The greatest miracle. He transformed my life. Hmm, overnight. Hmm, he saved my soul. <laughs> he saved my soul. Hello, he delivered me from, from all the, the wickedness that I was in. The cussing, the drinking, the smoking, the drugs. He he delivered me from all those things. And and, and he didn't do it little by little. It wasn't no twelve step program. Hmm. I prayed and he and he asked my prayer. Overnight I woke up and I knew it was gone. The desire. He took the desire from me. Miracle. It's a miracle. He delivered me from all of those things all at once. And I didn't feel a thing. Hello. I didn't fall on the ground. I didn't run around the church. I didn't holler and scream. He did it. He took the desire from me because I was willing to give it up. Are you willing to give it up? Hmm? Are you willing to give it up? 
Father, in Jesus' name, there is a miracle that needs to happen. There is a miracle of deliverance that needs to happen. There is somebody that hearing my voice that needs a miracle. And I pray, Lord God, that you would open up that person's heart, that they can receive the miracle. The miracle of deliverance. The miracle of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Help them to give that, that situation to you. To give that problem to you. To open their hearts and openly give it up to you. And ask you to deliver them. Take the desire, God. Take the desire in the name of Jesus. And I pray against that spirit that's worn against them. In the name of Jesus, I command you to loose them and let them go free. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off of them. Come out of them. In the name of Jesus. And go in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. I thank and praise God. Amen. For that deliverance. Amen. I believe it has happened already in the name of Jesus and I believe if you hear this voice you hear this message that then you need that deliverance it will happen to you in Jesus name amen I was getting ready to go into my gospel presentation but I was led that way amen you do what the spirits say do what are you saying brother Paul just be obedient amen just be obedient to what God would have you to do in the name of Jesus now The greatest miracle there is, is the gift of salvation. How God can change a heart. See, we have a spirit. It's just not in fellowship with God. When, 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 when we have an emptiness in our soul. I remember the old donut man. We have a hole in our heart, and only God can fill it. I ask you today, do you have, are you empty? Do you need your hole filled? Do you need that whole feel, that emptiness in your heart? Only God can feel it. And he feels it through the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. God will fill that void in your life, that emptiness, that loneliness in your heart, that you're longing for God to fill that void. Repent of your sins. Turn your life around. Believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he paid the penalty for every one of your sins. Believe the gospel message that Jesus died on the cross in your place and that he was raised the third day. Believe, in, believe the gospel message and you shall be saved. You say, well, how should I do it? Come, come, tell him, tell him, come to pray this prayer. Pray, pray, pray and believe from your heart. Believe, tell him, look, 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 I'm a sinner. But I don't want to stay a sinner. I don't want to stay a sinner. I've been sinning. But forgive me of all my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me. Pray this prayer. Pray it. Pray it. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you were raised the third day. I believe you were you're now sitting on the right hand of God praying that I will be saved. I want to be saved. Come into my heart. And save my soul. Come into my heart. And save my soul. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Amen. I thank and praise God for you. If you receive Jesus as your savior. But as of right now. If you need prayer. If you need somebody to talk to. You see the. You, you, if you look at the YouTube uh, version of this. There's a number on the screen. And I pray that you will call that number that you can get someone to pray with you in Jesus' name.